इमर्जिंग इश्यू इन यूएसए म्हणजेच सीमापार जातीभेद अमेरिकेतील उद्योगमुख समस्या इस विषय पर आधारित वेबिनार मे आप सभी का स्वागत है असोसिएशन फॉर सोशल अँड इकॉनॉमिक इक्वालिटी के अध्यक्ष तथा आज के वेबिनार के चेअरपर्सन ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर सुखदेव थोरात सर एक्स चेअरमन यू जी सी अँड आय सी एस एस आर आप हमारे साथ मौजूद है सर आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है ऑनरेबल मिलिन अवसर मोल सर डायरेक्टर ए आय एम यू एस ए आप हमारे साथ मौजूद है सर आपका असोसिएशन की ओर से बहुत बहुत स्वागत है ऑनरेबल तक्षक चहानदे सर एक्स प्रेसिडेंट ए आय सी कॅलिफोर्निया आप हमारे साथ मौजूद है सर असोसिएशन की ओर से आपका भी बहुत बहुत स्वागत है वेबिनार के आयोजन की अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर विमल थोरात मॅडम डॉक्टर त्रिलोक हजारे सर डॉक्टर गौतम कांबले सर डॉक्टर श्रीकांत भोते सर आप सभी का स्वागत है अनेक राज्यों से उपस्थित हमारे सहभागी श्रोता जो हमें झूम यूट्यूब फेसबुक टेलीग्राम जैसे माध्यम से वेबिनार में हमारा साथ दे रहे हैं आप सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है साथियों आज की चर्चा को आगे बढ़ाने से पहले इस चर्चा के आयोजन की भूमिका प्रस्तुत करने के लिए मैं ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर सुखदेव थोरात सर को सादर आमंत्रित करती हूँ हेलो सबको मेरे तरफ से जय भी आज का जो वेबिनार है वो कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन बियॉन्ड बॉर्डर द इमर्जिंग प्रॉब्लम इन यूएसए द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इस पे हम चर्चा करने की बहुत दिन से सोच रहे हैं और उसमें डॉक्टर मिलिन अवसर मोल और चाहंदे दोनों ने कंसेंट दिया है इसलिए हमने प्रोग्राम रखा है मैं मिलिन अवसर मोल का बहुत आभारी हूं कि उन्होंने उसमें कुछ लोगों से बात की वहां पे दो महिलाएं और ज्वाइन करने वाली थी लेकिन हो नहीं पाई उसका प्रॉब्लम यह है कि यहाँ जब सात साढ़े सात बजते तो वहां अर्ली मॉर्निंग साढ़े चार पांच होते हैं तो इसलिए टू ऑफ देम है ड्रॉप आउट लेकिन मिलिन अवसर मोल और चाहंदे ये तो मोवमेंट के लोग हैं उनको मॉर्निंग और इवनिंग का कोई उतना मतलब नहीं है सो दे हैव रियली एग्री टू स्पीक मिलिन अवसर मोल मेरा ख्याल है अभी अर्ली मॉर्निंग है लेकिन उससे भी थोड़ा सा कम कैलिफोर्निया में है मेरा ख्याल है पाँच साढ़े पाँच या छः बजे होंगे क्योंकि कैलिफोर्निया का टाइम तीन घंटे और पीछे है अम्बेडकर इंटरनेशनल मिशन जो पुरानी संस्था है राजू कामले उनके वन ऑफ द फाउंडर मेंबर थे उनके उसी संस्था में वो डायरेक्टर है मेंबर है और काम कर रहे हैं चांदे भी उसी तरह जो इंटरनेशनल ऐसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है उसमें उनका काम है और जो अमेरिका में जो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन की कुछ केस हुई है उनको उन्होंने पर्सनल लेवल पे लिया है तो इसमें हमें यही डिस्कस करना है कि अमेरिका में जाति भेदभाव की समस्या क्या है मतलब ये बहुत ही पेनफुल और डिस्गस्टिंग बात होती है कि आप इंडिया में तो कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन से सफर करते हो लेकिन जब बाहर जाते हो तो आपको लगता है कि आपकी मुक्ति हो गई है लेकिन ऐसा कुछ नहीं है डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर ने 1916 में जो पर्चा लिखा था कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी में उन्होंने वो प्रेजेंट किया था एंथ्रोपोलॉजी सेमिनार में Uh, उसमें उन्होंने लिखा हुआ है शुरू में ही जब उन्होंने बात की है वो वॉल्यूम वन में है उनका पेपर उनका पेपर जो कास्टिंग ने दिया uh, मैंने वो अपस्टैक जो था वो मिलिंद uh, सरमोल ने जो मुझे भेजा था उसको मैंने 
पीडीएफ इसमें पीपी में कन्वर्ट किया था ताकि मैं वो दिखाना चाहता आपको लेकिन वो मुझे मिल वो पीपीपी -पी तो गायब हो गई लेकिन मैं देखता हूं यदि मेरे पास है वो तो क्योंकि वो बहुत ही पावरफुल और इंपॉर्टेंट uh, स्टेटमेंट है बाबा साहेब का uh, एक सेकंड मुझे आप टाइम दे दीजिए ताकि मैं देख लू यस आई गॉट इट तो मैं पढ़ के सुनाता हूँ उससे आपको सारी बातें समझ में आएगी बाबा साहब ने लिखा था उस पेपर में प्रैक्टिकली इट इज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट पोर्टेड ट्रिमंडस कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस इट इज ए टोटल प्रॉब्लम इट्स ए लोकल प्रॉब्लम बट वन कैपेबल ऑफ मच वाइडर मिचिप फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज कास्ट इन इंडिया डज एग्जिस्ट Hindu will hardly intermarry or have any social intercourse with outsider. Rakhika Sandhi is very important. Hai. And if Hindus migrate to other region on Earth, Indian caste would become a world problem. Kitna forecast or kitna prediction unka sahi nikla ki caste ki problem jo hai wo beyond border bhi. एक्सपीरियंस uh, की रही की है तो इसमें uh, इसके पहले सबसे ज्यादा जो काम हुआ है वो यूके में हुआ uh, मीना धांडा जो है मैंने उनसे बात की थी सी वॉज वेरी की टू ज्वाइन लेकिन उनके आज ही एक दो जगह लेक्चर है बट सी विल स्पीक मे बी इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी ऑन दिस्क्रिप्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन फेस बाय दलित इन यूके यूके में प्रॉब्लम uh, हुआ आइडेंटिफाई uh, हुआ कमेटी बिठाई उसका बिल बना लेकिन वहां की जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है हिंदू टेंपल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उसने उसने वो इस बिल को पिछले इलेक्शन में रोका अब अमेरिका में ये प्रॉब्लम उभर के आया है ग्रेजुअली और इसके बारे में मिलिन और सोरमोल हमें डिटेल बताएंगे कि हिस्टोरिकल अकाउंट देने की बात उन्होंने की है अपना भी एक्सपीरियंस वो शेयर करेंगे और चाहते जो है ये जो केस एक उभर के आई यूएसए में और केस फिर कोर्ट में दाखिल हुई उस केल, केस को लेके चांद काम कर रहे हैं तो वो हमें उस केस के बारे में और और जो उनका एक्सपीरियंस उसके बारे में बात करेंगे तो ये जो प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कास्ट है विच गो आउटसाइड द बॉर्डर ऑफ इंडिया इस इस वेरी रिजनेबल सीरियस प्रॉब्लम यूके में है यूएसए में है जहां जहां इंडियन कम्युनिटी गई है दोनों मिला के वहां प्रॉब्लम है मैं मलेशिया में गया एक दो बार तो वहां प्रॉब्लम है इलेवन इलेवन परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन इज इंडियन देन इन मलेशिया एंड इट्स ए कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दी कैन अदर सो प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्ट अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज में ये प्रॉब्लम है मैं जब यूएसए का चेयरमैन था तो मैं मलेशिया गया मॉरिशस गया उन्होंने उनको मैंने हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन बनाने की मदद की तो उन्होंने मुझे डिग्री दी थी, थी स्पेशल कॉन्वोकेशन को आए एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर आए मुझे डिग्री अवार्ड भी मॉरिशस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी से और प्रेसिडेंट से मुलाकात हुई और जो मॉरिशस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी के जो प्रेसिडेंट थे उन्हों वो मुझे घुमाने ले गया अब उन्होंने मेरा सारा बायोडाटा गूगल से डाउनलोड किया था और पता था उनको कि मेरा बैकग्राउंड क्या है तो वो मुझे कार में घुमाते रहे और एकदम ऐसी जगह ले गए जहां मैंने देखा डॉक्टर अंबेडकर साहब की एसोसिएशन का बोर्ड था और कुछ कल्चरल सेंटर भी था तो मैं थोड़ा सा अक्का पक्का रह गया मैंने कहा ये क्यों ले आया मुझे उनका बैकग्राउंड मुझे मालूम नहीं था तब उन्होंने अपने आप को डिस्कलोज किया कि मैं बिहार का हूँ फॉर जनरेशन टूगेदर फोर्थ फिफ्थ जनरेशन होगी लेकिन यहाँ प्रॉब्लम कास्ट की भी है और इसलिए हम जो दलित हो गए इकट्ठा करके डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर का एक संस्थान बनाया सो आई वॉज रियली सरप्राइज सो द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कास्ट ट्रेवल्स एवरी वेयर वेर एवर द हिंदू माइग्रेट द प्रोडिक्शन ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर हैज कम ट्रू आज हमें एक मौका मिलेगा कि दो अच्छे स्पीकर हमारे पास है जो हमारे सामने इस बात को 
प्रेजेंट करेंगे कि इस प्रॉब्लम का नेचर क्या है और उसमें क्या कोशिश से की जा रही है यूनाइटेड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से एज वेल एज यूएसए यूएसए के बारे में बाद में हम आएंगे तो इतनी ही प्रिलिमिनरी बात करके मैं विद्या चौर बगा को कहता हूँ कि इसको शुरू करें थैंक यू सर अब मैं चर्चा के लिए सादर आमंत्रित करती हूँ ऑनरेबल मिलीन अवसर मुल सर जी को लेकिन उससे पहले मैं अनिता तिरपुड़े मैडम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश डॉक्टर अंबेडकर कॉलेज दीक्षा भूमि सर का परिचय देने के लिए मैं आमंत्रित करती हूँ थैंक यू वेरी मच मैडम a very great thanks to the association for social and economic equality for giving me the opportunity to introduce the most eminent personality mr milan avsamul who is our guest speaker today i am also thankful to mr milan avsamul for accepting our invitation and sparing with us his precious time today on this occasion a well announced person who is among us today who is born in the motherland india and specifically from mumbai who is settled in the abode that is in the united state for the last 27 years for his progress but it has is still in the his own country that is india and who is an intellectual and struggling in the hope of doing progress for his own society so is none other than mr milan asamol who is presently working as a vice president at morgan stanley on wall street in new york so far as mr melan asamol education is concerned sir had done btech from the indian institute of technology mumbai he is a staunch ambedkarite who has committed himself to the struggle against caste discrimination and is on the mission to spread baba saheb's teaching worldwide he is on the board of directors of ambedkar international mission and had been a facilitator for many atrocities related protest in tri states area he is also very passionate for taking our cause to the united nation and has been instrumental in many initiatives for engaging with the united nations he is very closely associated with the prominent dalit activists in india and in constant collaboration with them to address the various challenges faced by our communities particularly in remote villages and in slums in the city with this brief introduction i would like to invite mr melind asamol to please deliver his discourse so please thank you so much ma'am uh jai bhim everyone i would uh, like to first of all thank prat sir for giving a good introduction but more importantly for organizing prat sir and his team this very important webinar on a very important and uh, evolving topic which is of international significance and it's really a great pleasure to be here to participate in this uh, important event the reference uh, thorat sir gave about baba saheb's uh, remark about caste in 1916 uh, he was at the age uh, 25 years old a very uh it was probably his first public speech that uh, came out in a print form in which like thorat sir explained he predicted the menace of caste system not just for india but globally if it was unchecked and like most of his predictions this one also is coming true and playing out and playing out uh very fast uh, and in a very menacing way internationally so today we will discuss about various aspects of this problem abroad we are pretty much familiar with this problem at home in india but abroad also now it is rearing its ugly head and uh, that that's what we'll try to analyze today so when baba saheb said this it was he was in uh, america at that time in columbia university and like i said at the age of 25 and uh, he made that prediction so before we go into the aspects of how the caste is unfolding here in the us let us settle on certain specific aspects of caste because there it can be misleading if those uh, there is a lot of misinformation going on about what caste is so i would like to clarify on a few points caste discrimination the term itself is actually an oxymoron because 
where there is caste, there is discrimination. It's caste embodies discrimination. It is not something that can be separated from him. So is there caste discrimination outside India? The question really should be, is there caste outside India? Do, does caste appear outside India? So that should be the question. We cannot have caste and we cannot separate discrimination for, from that. Other aspect of caste discrimination is that in a technical sense, every caste that is out there is a victim of caste discrimination or discrimination based on caste because any caste that finds another caste above it in the hierarchy is a candidate for being a victim and which is also a fact. But having said that, the worst case scenario of caste discrimination or the worst victims of it are the Dalits or the former untouchables. So when caste discrimination, discrimination based on caste is being discussed, we have to understand that the quantum of victimization that comes on the way of Dalits is astronom astronomically more than other castes. So we have to be very uh, clear on this fact that what Dalits face as victimization of the caste system is much more than the regular uh, caste Hindus. Dalits again being the former untouchables. Baba Sahib, after coming back to India, made another observation in one of his periodicals. And he said that when a Christian introduces himself uh, or rather his religion or a Muslim introduces his religion, his or her religion, it suffices to say that I am a Christian or I am a Muslim and the matter gets settled. There. But when a Hindu is concerned, we cannot just stop at saying that so-and-so is a Hindu. It has to be supplemented by the caste. Only then the whole identity gets settled. So caste is that way a very integral part of one's identity in the Hindu fold. So with these few basic things uh, out of the way, let us now try and explore how the caste dynamics has played out historically in the US. So in the US, uh, in the 50s and 60s, I would say there was immigration from India, but that immigration was very limited. It was very specific to a particular section of society, a particular, particularly the upper castes. And that immigration was in either the academia or in chosen professional fields like uh, medicine, uh, uh, technology, but the immigration was uh, not that heavy or it was not anywhere comparable with what we have today. So when that lot of Indians uh, were residing in the US, that time the caste did not play out, caste did not become a prominent aspect of their lived experience. And if anybody thinks that this is because it was a change of heart or some enlightenment about uh, uh, humanitarian values. So I have to disappoint here that was not the case. The reason why caste did not manifest itself in that generation of Indians is because the circumstances had changed. There was no fertile ground to exercise one's caste privileges because to exercise one's caste privileges to its full value, you need a section of society which are the, the Dalits, which are the lower castes at your disposal to be able to do that. And the initial batch in the 50s and 60s, particularly that I'm speaking of, did not have the luxury of that crowd. So the caste factor did not play out in its normal role as it does in India or as it does where there is a sizable amount of Indian population with mix of different castes. And another factor towards that could be that because they were less in number, the benefits of flashing the caste and getting its privileges were probably lesser than the benefits of being together as Indian because you are in a different country and you are settling down and being from a net, uh, from India, that identity probably prevailed over the caste identity. So that would have been the case with the first few generations. And then the children born to these uh, immigrants also did not uh, get exposure to caste as one would normally get in a society like India. So 
there is a possibility that caste was downplayed, not that it totally went away. It was downplayed because of the prevailing situation and not because of any altruistic uh, attitude. And with this, uh, with the progression of time, there was a huge influx of Indians in the 90s because of technological uh, requirements in this country, because of India coming out as a technological stronghold uh, with uh, technological services uh, developing in India and the job market uh, attracting them here. So in the 90s and then onwards, Indians came in this country in large numbers. And uh, from then onwards, the situation started changing. The fertile ground, which was missing in the earlier generations, started creating itself. And we'll go a bit into that, like uh, how, how did that happen? The Indians who came here typically came from my generation. So it was in the 90s that the job market opened here and uh, America welcomed uh, the technology experts. This generation of Indians, their lived experience, their value system, and their outlook was shaped by two important factors that happened in India. One was the Mandal Commission that was... Hello? Uh, one was the Mandal Commission, uh, which you folks might remember when the Singh government came in and it was implemented uh, in 89 or 90. That time there was a polarization and there was a lot of animosity towards reservation from everyone. So that whole generation got shaped and got their values driven through the their animosity towards reservation as such. And the other factor that uh, influenced them strongly was the upward mobility of the Dalits. The Dalits of previous generations were settling into the new world of emancipation, were into the education field, into the job field. But 90 onwards, or then, or maybe a decade before that, but around that time, there was a upward mobility amongst the Dalits into niche areas. And all this was being resented by the anti-reservationists. So with this value system, there was this mass uh, migration to the US of Indians. And that now created a fertile field, which was earlier missing in the earlier generation. Another important aspect is that the earlier generation being small in number had no choice but to adopt the American way of life and submit to the American way of life. They might have held on to their personal cultural values and values in their personal life, but by and large in public life and otherwise, they had to submit to the American way of life. Whereas when the 90s onwards, when that mass migration happened, and uh, one more aspect of that migration is that it happened in specific geographies. US is a huge country, but if a large section of a particular nationality comes into a huge country, but is localized to a few geographies like New York, New Jersey being one of them, California being one of them. Then that fertile ground for exercising caste-based dynamics is created. And particularly if you're inspired by such uh, uh, invidious ideas uh, as are aroused by the Mandal Commission, your reaction to Mandal Commission or about uh, your anim animosity towards upward mobility of the Dalits, then it becomes even more uh, uh, formidable. So that is the background in which there was a shift from a benign caste identity or a non-existent or a very uh, tamed down, very uh, uh, low-key affair to something that started emerging. And that's the phase we are in. We are in the progression right now of how that whole dynamics is playing out and how caste is now coming out as a defining criteria in the, uh, in the whole dynamics of social life, professional life, and educational life. Uh, I would also take a diversion here and uh, talk a bit about the education. We'll talk more about what's happening in the universities. I'm sure uh, we are curious to know more about that. 
But in the educational field also, as people started coming in for jobs, the exposure to America started growing and more and more students started coming to the US from India for higher studies. And in that space, also there was the uh, rising cases of casteism, of caste discrimination. And there it mattered more actually, because in the corporate sector, in the professional arena, it was the individual who was affected because of caste. And I'll go more into the more details into that. But in the academic spaces, the actual work, the actual uh, operational part of uh, the academia was affected because there are sections, there are departments in universities like South Asian study or South Asian culture. And if in those departments, there is no representation of, or rather there is only representation of a certain section or the upper caste uh, uh, representation from India, then it is not a true uh, study or it's not a true medium. It does not reflect the truth about society or does not reflect give the right data for that department to conclude its operations, to continue its operations. So it became more pressing actually for tackling this in the academic spaces, not that in the corporate spaces or in the social spaces, this was less important. So that is how uh, these things were lined up. In the corporate space, Indians, and uh, uh, it's a good thing, made great strides, great progress, particularly in the technology sector. And while all that happened, this fertile ground was being created almost in an organic way because America is a very open country. It welcomes different cultures. It is a big supporter of diversity and inclusivity. So being uh, seeing so many Indians uh, at... Uh, uh, in the technology sector and otherwise, there was encouragement to promote that culture and to adopt to it. And so that again helped in some way to create this fertile ground because the narrative that was created around Indian culture and caste and Indianness was lopsided. It was coming only from one section of the society and there was hardly any voice or representation for people, uh, for Dalits in particular. Excuse me. So these false narratives that came about are one of the serious issues that need to be tackled and I can, I'll, I'll talk about it later. At this time, I'll, uh, let us look at what are the provisions within the United States to, towards discrimination and such like, as such caste is not uh, recognized uh, criteria in the United States because it, because it never existed here, the founding fathers never had it in their wildest dream that such a thing would be uh, coming into their society and will have to be dealt with. So, but there were, uh, there was discrimination in America. There were uh, subjugated uh, societies. We all know the African-Americans, for example, or the women as a category. So towards their protection, in 1964, the civil rights movement happened, which was a landmark thing. It was a history changing event in the uh, history of this country. And through that came the act of uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And under the Civil Rights Act, any form of discrimination, particularly in uh, employment, education, and other public life was deemed illegal. And there were criteria that were defined that were called protected uh, classes where special attention was given to make sure that those protected classes are not discriminated upon. The protected classes initially were based on sex, based on nationality, religion, race, color, and then as with time, more categories got added to it. But uh, caste definitely was not a factor for that and for obvious reasons, because it was not an entity that was playing out here at that time. But under that, there is chapter uh, Title Seven, which enforces which uh, legis uh, administers make sure that the discrimination which is deemed illegal by law is actually enforced is actually administered so organizations have to give a plan for their equal employment opportunity for their affirmative action what that means is if there are 
there is not enough representation of a particular class, whether it's women or it's Asians or whatever those protected uh, categories are, then that, that corporation has to provide a plan, annual plan to the federal agencies like Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, that this is how we are going to rectify the situation. And then it is monitored whether the situation is actually being rectified. If not, then there are penalties. Some, are, uh, some of these actions are done through government mandates, federal and state. Some of these are done through self-motivation. That is another big difference here. Uh, in the private sector, the concept of affirmative action is wholeheartedly accepted by the top organizations uh, like Microsoft or uh, Apple and Netflix and many of those without any government mandate. Government mandate is there, it has its limit, but also private organizations have wholeheartedly accepted it. Even the public, Pew Research shows that 63% of Americans approve of affirmative action. Now, if you compare this with how the sentiment is for reservation, which can be seen as a parallel to affirmative action in India, we will see the stark difference of how the national ethos or the sentiment towards reservation is. That is one important point. So there are these uh, safeguards, there are these uh, policies uh, that every corporation has to adhere to or face uh, penalties. And these are implemented uh, with uh, full honesty. Uh, these are not just paper uh, things which uh, happen to be there, but these are. So this is how discrimination is dealt with in this country from 1964 onwards, and which is pretty effective. Um, uh, there is always room for improvement, but it is quite effective. Now, like I said, there is, caste is not a criteria here. So any discrimination that happens on the basis of caste. And uh, my friend Takshak will speak more about it when it comes to the Cisco case, where the whole, the entire facts of the case show that it was a, the case of caste discrimination, no doubts about it, but because the legal framework does not support discrimination based on caste, not support, but does not understand or recognize the discrimination based on caste. The state of California still went ahead and used the existing criteria of race, nationality, uh, ancestry, and such like to still build a case out of it. But the way forward would really be to introduce caste as a protected criteria so that it becomes deterrent for any caste-based dynamic to play out in this country. And like Thorat sir said, people come to I'll come out of India, Dalits particularly, thinking that they will be going out in the free, open world and you know unshackling themselves from what uh, the bindings are based on caste. It's not that simple. Again, that whole uh, dynamics is playing out here, and that that has to be dealt with. Uh, can you please tell me how I'm doing with time? Yeah, uh, 15 minutes more. 15 minutes more? Oh, good. Because I have quite a few things to cover. Thank you. So the way the caste dynamics is playing out for the most part is the trigger point or the optics of it is through reservation. It is, at least in the corporate sector, the narrative that is being built is that Reservation is what is driving the meritorious out of India and they are coming to the US because the opportunities in India are limited because they are being taken over by reservation and that shrinks the space for their opportunities and that's why they are coming here. So what that leads to is the thought that they are the victims of caste system and because they are in their preponderance, their numbers are much higher than the pro-reservationists. Their narrative is getting precedence. Their voice is getting strengthened. And that is a real, uh, there is a real danger of misinformation here and whatever comes out of it. So it is uh, very important to be alert and vigilant and try to thwart this kind of attempts. And that is what uh, uh, folks like Takshak, myself, and our organizations, they are engaged with. 
speaking of the false narratives i'll i was going to take that later in the day but uh, since you're on the subject uh, let me speak about that there is a very concerted a very uh, deliberate misinformation campaign that's going on in uh, various fields about and around caste so it starts with a stout denial saying that it just does not exist and it's not there and it's some something that uh, people are just uh, peddling around when that doesn't work then it comes to glorification of caste saying you know what caste is such a great thing uh, in the past this was uh, what gave india its glory and the society was so happy but somewhere down the line the moguls and the british they came along and they distorted it and that's where we see a deviant version of it which might have its problem but as such in its essence it's a great thing to have and when that argument doesn't go too far then it comes to saying that caste is not even a word originated in india it's in none of our scriptures it's a portuguese word so it's some it's something that is imported from uh, europe uh, as part of the colonial policies and it's not part of our culture it was imposed on us and the last and most important thing which i have touched upon earlier is that caste is there but and its bad effects are there and we all agree on that the bad effects are that there are people who get admission at 35% and there are people who don't get admission at 99% so the caste discrimination is indeed there and it needs to be looked into now this is a narrative that's coming in the corporates of america and i have been witness to one such narrative and uh, the, if the, this is the kind of narrative that is being built and this is what is being impressed upon the neutral non indian americans who eventually will take this forward and form policies and uh, work around it there is a danger that this misinformation may completely distort the real picture and project the victims as the perpetrator of atrocities and the actual perpetrators as the victims and that's happening and you may, you may be surprised this is happening blatantly in in the us in corporates like where we work we are sensitized to uh, inclusivity diversity how there are hidden biases that we have to work on how uh, things happen without our knowledge in terms of discrimination harassment and retaliation and what not so these things are taken seriously in the corporate world and these things are actually supposed to be in a extended form or in a uh, situation uh, favorable to us even caste can be part of this discussion but the way caste is made part of that discussion is that caste is something which exists in india and it victimizes the upper caste because we are denied our rights and reservation is the root cause for that and that's why we have to live and uh, migrate abroad so like thorat sir said we we look to come outside india to seek relief from the uh, thraldom from the shackles that we have whereas the other party the anti reservationists say that they come out of india just to escape the caste system so this is the uh, misinformation campaign that's going on very heavily in the corporates and like i said earlier and i'll repeat because it's important that the voice is very strong in this because sheer numbers the percentage of pro reservationist versus uh, anti reservationist is very skewed by the way can you hear me loudly can you hear me clearly yeah sir it's very good. okay <laughs> okay okay thank yeah. you so I, let me touch upon what measures have been taken here in this country administrative uh, in an administrative sense in a legal sense to address this emerging caste menace so let me read out uh, one uh, uh, important piece of information congress has already recognized that caste based discrimination exists and is unacceptable in the united states in 2007 the 110th congress passed the historic house concurrent resolution resolution number 139 expressing that caste based discrimination is unacceptable and the united states is committed to eliminating it and ensuring that qualified dalits are not discouraged from working with the us government or us organizations so this is a very important uh, uh 
resolution that was passed. So from there, we also saw uh, recently the various campuses, various universities taking proactive measures to recognize caste as a criteria for discrimination. So the most recent one being the, uh, the CSU reference. So California State Universities, it's uh, having 23 campuses and they adopted a resolution to recognize caste as a protected category. And this is a landmark thing. The reason being, like I said earlier, that students and the academics spaces require more caste protection and uh, more uh, work around it. So in the California State University campuses, anybody facing caste discrimination now has a platform, has a framework to find relief, to raise the issue, to make a complaint and to be heard. And it's a big thing and caste, specifically on caste, because caste is now a recognized category. But actually this journey in the education spaces started with Brandeis University in Massachusetts. As a matter of fact, uh, Professor Thorath has been very closely connected with that university and has been engaged with the academicians there, with uh, the students and activists. So in 2019, it was the first university to recognize caste as a discriminating criteria and anybody on their campus, anybody in, in, in the university, if he or she ever faces a caste-based discrimination, had the recourse to go and find relief for that discrimination. Uh, and that started the trend. And today we have uh, Brandeis, uh, of course, uh, CSU, which I just spoke about. Then we have University of California, Davis, which is in California, Colby College, which is in Maine, and Harvard University, which again is in Boston. And this last four, including the CSU, is a development in the last four months. So in the last four months, four universities have adopted caste as a criteria for discrimination, which is a good development. On the Harvard front, it is uh, the union of undergraduate and graduate worker, uh, student workers that has adopted it. So it's about the union having 5,000 members. So those 5,000 members will now be protected by uh, protected from any discrimination uh, on the caste basis. So that is uh, some of the good development that's uh, coming along. And I'm sure that this trend will continue. The struggle is on the uh, Ambedkar rights and other like-minded folks are at it uh, continuously because like I said, the US is a big country. There's a long distance to go, but the process has started. And it's not going to be easy because uh, the counterparty is also equally diligent, equally vigilant. So at least there is a counter to the mischief that otherwise would have happened on the name of caste. And that's uh, something which we look forward to seeing more of uh, in terms of countering it in the coming future. Uh -huh. I would like to share some of my personal experiences. So I somewhere along the line, uh, knowingly, unknowingly connected the caste dynamics with reservation, which is a fact because reservation is how the trigger point is expressed. But the fact of the matter is there is a inbuilt animosity, hostility towards the Dalits. And it is there, it does not disappear after coming to the US. In the earlier days, like I said, the absence of the lid did not manifest this animosity, did not allow it to manifest. But as the migration happened uh, in large numbers in 90s, it was a migration not just of one predominant class, maybe uh, in huge numbers, but then it also had a mix of the lids and other lower castes. So that's where the fertile ground, which I was referring to, was created. The impression given is that we have nothing against caste, we don't believe in caste, but the fact is that because of reservation, everything is going wrong and then that whole uh, outpour happens towards reservation and uh, one gets a sense that oh, maybe caste is not the driving criteria here, but uh, reservation is and 
then the whole narrative starts revolving around reservation. But that is far from the truth. The fact is that there is an inherent animosity, hostility towards the Dalits, which plays out as the situation arises. And I'll just share a few of my own personal experiences on that front. I used to share a room with a Brahmin friend, and he was a friend. And when we used to go to the supermarket to buy groceries that time once, uh, and he loved eating non-veg because for him it was a novel experience. He didn't grow up eating that and the taste grew on him. But once I asked him, that, shall we buy uh, the shellfish, uh, the mollusks? And he said, oh, no, 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 let's not eat that. Uh, in my place, the SCSTs are the ones who eat that. So there was no reservation here. There was nothing about it. It was just the concept contempt that since SCST is eat that kind of thing, I'm not going to eat that. We were watching a cricket match, a group of uh, uh, us who were a part of a cricket club, all Indians, and we were watching a cricket match between India and Pakistan. And uh, when uh, one of the Indian players uh, uh, scored, or made a good score or hit the ball, one of the friends, uh, not my friend, but uh, somebody who was watching that person's friend made a comment. Saleh Chamar Jakya Vi Ball Lekhya to the Pakistan. So again, that is a caste slur which came out very naturally and that whole animosity, hostility, you can see it comes out even if there are no Dalits, then it got exercised on a Pakistani baller. But that that is simmering inside. You can see that. There was another occasion where we were again, watching a cricket match in a different place and there was a dark skin, I will not name the person, but dark skin bowler from India and uh, somebody said again from the crowd that, hey, uh, is he from Jaibhim? So, th all this has nothing to do with the reservation. It has everything to do with just the inherent contempt, inherent disgust that these people carry and it is going to manifest in one way or the other. The system here in the US is very strong, the legal system and in its enforcement also, but it does not recognize caste at this time, but it will be difficult for the castes to recreate India-like discriminatory practices here, but they will use things like reservation or they will use arguments like we are the victims uh, of uh, reservation and so on and so forth to create an atmosphere favorable to them. So that is something that everybody has to be very mindful about. and. Uh, is there caste discrimination in the US? Let's come to the fundamental question what we started our discussion with. If all this narrative that I said has not answered that question, then let's uh, answer it in a different way. Is there caste discrimination in the US? So the, let's try and examine one aspect of it, that the Dalits who are there in the US, who have come all the way from India and it's upward it's a path from upward mobility. It's a uh, achievement. It's a progress that they have achieved. After coming here, are they willing to wear their identity without duress? Are they are they willing to, particularly the Ambedkarites, willing to have Ambedkar photo in their homes? Are they willing to celebrate their uh, festivals or their uh, occasions? without duress freely in the Indian community. They will do that within their own community where there is no, where there is complete absence of uh, any kind of hostility, obviously. But in the larger Indian community, in the housing complexes they, where they stay, in the other social associations or in the corporate sector, will they be, are they free to identify there, to associate themselves with this identity? The answer is no. The answer is no because the Cisco caste case, and I will allow Takshak to speak more on that, and uh, similar cases, we are out that there is a, there is duress, there is that freedom is missing to be your own identity, because towards that identity, there is so much of hatred, there is so much of negativity that people harbor, that it is prudent not to flash it, not to wear it on your sleeves and to play along with the larger crowd and their 
things and we do our things in our own space now us is a free country as any good modern civil society should be if a dalit is not free to express his identity and to follow his or her uh his or her commitments to that identity whether it's ambedkar jayanti or whether it's any other thing that comes with that identity then i think that is discrimination it's a loss of freedom it's uh, your freedom has been invaded if you are not in a position to be free to be yourself and ex- exercise your own way of life that is i think the highest form of discrimination it might not come out as somebody doing it to you but then the atmosphere is created the whole narrative is created where you stand to be the victim if you identify yourself with your real identity and i think that is something which everybody should introspect that discrimination happens in this form because in a housing complex for example there are 99 houses 100 houses one will be dalit and 99 will be indians is that dalit family free to express themselves to be true to their own convictions to be true to their own ideology and unfortunately the answer is no and that is where i say that discrimination is happening with time had when i came in this country i was working with americans because that time there were not so many indians in that company at least i found a complete sense of freedom to be myself to tell them about baba sahib to tell them everything but as the landscape the demography changed the discussions around coffee rooms the discussions in friendly chats in the office would be centered around hey you know uh, the parking lot here it has a handicap reservation it reminds me of the reservation in india hey you know today we interviewed that girl her name was patil and she was from mumbai university uh, yeah i think we should hire her because see her name is she is from mumbai university her name is patil and patil does not suggest that it's a reservation category it is uh, open category so now in the united states where it's a private sector there is no reservation if the consideration about hiring somebody is taken on the last name to conclude to uh, infer whether it's a scheduled caste or it's a general category i think then caste has come a long way in discrimination and it operates in this stealth stealthy way in the background and like the cisco case it came to the foreground because of the tenacity of the person who raised that whole thing but it is here uh, the caste reality is here it will continue to compound if it goes unchecked but thankfully one thing stacked against it is the uh, value system in this country the f- uh, legal framework in this country if that can be leveraged if the right case can be made to it then i do see relief coming and there are efforts going towards that so i will now come to the concluding part of uh, my narrative we'll go back to dr baba sahib ambedkar uh, when he made that uh, that uh, thrust of reference that uh, indians when they go outside caste problem will become a global problem and not just remain an indian problem so that was very early in his uh, i don't even say career it was he was still a student at columbia but from then onwards he worked on this issue he gave he his teachings his writings his philosophy are a guiding light to ambedkarites like myself takshak and so many of us here to take this situation on and to create a counter to this misinformation and this menace that is unfolding in front of us and with the various universities and the uh, acceptance of caste as a criteria in their discrimination policies it we are heading in the right direction and will continue to do that so dr bawa sambedkar's teaching and his thoughts are our weapon we know that is the uh, antidote to uh, this virus and we will continue to apply it and take the uh, take the movement forward with that i will conclude 
I thank everyone for their patience, audience uh, listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. America में इसकी अलग-अलग क्षेत्रों में फैल रहा जातिवाद आपने हमारे बीच प्रस्तुत किया. Thank you, sir. अब मैं आमंत्रित करने जा रही हूँ ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर तक्षक चाहन्दे सर को. लेकिन उससे पहले मैं सनीता तिरपुड़े मैडम को सर का परिचय देने के लिए आमंत्रित करती हूँ. Thank you once again, madam. It's my privilege to introduce the respected guest speaker, Mr. Takshak Chahande, who is an Ambedkar missionary activist. He was the president of All India Shamta Sainik Dal, Pune district, and worked on many slum areas to improve educational conditions. As an entrepreneur, he started a software development and training company exclusively for Ambedkarites. He started a hostel facility for boys and provided training for many years at Pune. His social commitment made him president of Ambedkar International Center, a USA-based organization that has 13 acres of land at very close to White House. He's a great networker to mobilize Ambedkarites and bring them together. Wherever he goes, he starts a local Ambedkarites group. If it doesn't have one, he started Apna IIT when he was in IIT Bombay, Apna Bangalore in Bangalore, Apna Pune in Pune, and now Bay Area Ambedkarites Group in Bay Area, California. He led AIC's effort to file Amiscus brief in Cisco caste discrimination case that was endorsed by top academicians and organizations. Academically, he is MTech in computer science and engineering from IIT Bombay currently pursuing executive management education at Stanford, USA. To survive, he works as a software architect at Facebook and lives in Bay Area, California. With this brief introduction, I would like to uh, uh, request Mr. Takshak Chahande to please deliver his discourse. So you please. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving my information. Uh, Jaiyum to everyone, great to see more than 100 people joining this uh, call to understand the rising caste issues in the United States. Uh, I will try to basically uh, pick up the points where uh, Melin sir has basically left the talk and try to build up the, the scenarios and cases, what we need to uh, see to understand how issues still exist and what are the things uh, we are basically doing it here. So the webinar topic is very apt for today's condition, and I'm glad to be part of this discussion. So at least we all agree that caste is a notion of mind, has traveled outside of India along with that mindset, right? And uh, imagining that it will not travel to outside of you know, India's border could have been you know, insane expectation. So what Dr. Ambedkar has referred uh, in his uh, thesis, uh, and what Mr. Kerker has said, Mr. Kerker is the one who said the statement which is referred by Dr. Ambedkar, and this is this is still valid, right? Uh, Milin sir has covered how the migration has happened here, right? So let's understand that game, right? Like I, I consider it as like early accessors and the late comers. So the early accessors or early uh, you know entered here. Uh, they were all from, let's consider the privileged caste, and that's why actually they had the privilege to come over here before us. And what happened? Like people may say that, okay, they came here, so what happened, right? Uh, they came here now, as everyone knows, with experience, with, uh, uh, with the number of years you basically spend in a company, you reach to a certain level. And that is where they are in a power position right now. When I say power position, it means that they have an authority to hire and fire people. They are basically at the managing level, they are at the director level or the vice president level. Or now you can see that there are trends happening in at least in California, which is the Silicon Valley of whole world, where you know prominent top companies, executives are Indians. Recently, you might have seen that the Twitter CEO is also an Indian origin, Agarwal, right? There are so many startup companies that uh, you know, uh, uh, Silicon Valley is famous for, uh, are built up by Indians and that has a network. It is not uh, uh, by luck, people are basically uh, going to that top level. It is the network 
It is the network which helps them. It is on the referral network. And going into that network is a big challenge for people like us, no matter what talent, no matter what education background we carry with us. So it is available in India. It is the same situation is happening in, uh, in, in US, right? So there is one more aspect which is not exist in India, in India but exist in United States. I think uh, I would like to basically throw some light on that. So the legal visa to work here in United States is H-1B visa. You might have been knowing about it. So H-1B visa is the visa filed by an employer, right? Uh, for employees to make sure that they get it uh, a right legal uh, legalities to work over here. Now, imagine an employer is filing a visa to make him make an employee work over here. It means that he's like a bonded labor. You know? Until a person gets a US green card or a citizenship, it is very hard for a person to change even companies. It is not easy. Now, this process, this whole process takes a lot of efforts. It's not like one year or two year process. It's like 10 years, 15 years process to get that green card. And that is where many people try to hide their identities so that they don't get discriminated. Uh, as uh, even Volker sir has asked me, uh, asked the question about the stats, like how would these people are participating in this? But uh, Melin sir already said that people are hiding their identity not to get into the discriminated part and be there as it is, just like a bonded labor. Now, the typical Hindi, Hindu Indian mentality is one that has a power and authority. The moment they have it, they act like a master and treat everyone as a slaves. And then when, when the slaves are there, they will ask them to slog more and more. They squeeze them like a lemon. And that is where the problems are in the US work culture. Believe me, non-Asian community people who are, who are like, uh, like American natives or uh, you know, from different other countries like Russia and all, they generally try not to work under US manage, uh, Indian management because they know that if they work, their, their Indian mentality itself is basically a problem. So we could basically see like why these companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro or the services companies are basically like people call it the desi working companies. And that is where day and night, they basically just squeeze it. So we have seen that there are people who have power. They are not from our community, but they are from the privileged background. And when we enter right now, they are trying to squeeze in all the aspects. So at least we understand the settings here, how the settings here in US works. And it is very hard for us to basically you know, uh, break that. Now, let's understand, like we are talking about a caste distribution, right? Uh, in India, at least we know that, okay, atrocities happens and our people get killed or, you know, like they get into, you know, the different problems. But what kind of nature of that discrimination happens in the United States, right? So the first thing is that no scope to grow higher up in the ladder. The moment they will know that, okay, we are from this particular community, their mindset gets triggered as we know that the caste has not removed from their mind. We, they, they stop our growth, right? No social network, as uh, Melinda already mentioned that in the apartment complex or the housing places where people try to stay, like I came here five years back in United States before that I was in Pune and Bangalore for many years. So when people come here first time, they try to see that, hey, where is my Indian community? Because they want to basically make sure that their kids play with uh, the right set of folks or don't want to basically you know, get indulged into any other bad problems. And that is where they try to build their social network. But the moment they realize that, hey, 99% of people are from privileged category and I'm the only one over here who comes from an untouchable background, then it either they hide their identity or if they try to basically showcase their identity, they will basically find the a big fight of discrimination. It provides the hostile environment, even at the workplace, you know, and this builds up the mental harassment. So after all, if you look at it, it's not a great life to get altogether here, right? But now there, there is a problem, like some people might be thinking that, hey, why don't you basically come back to India? Like your life, your life could be better, right? 
but but believe me right coming to this level from nowhere so we had no access of many of the materialistic things and even the privilege to basically take the education we got everything because of dr ambedkar now we reached to a level right where we have accomplished uh, many great achievements right due to many other factors going back to india and surrendering again ourselves to other part of the discrimination is not a viable option right social or family pressure is always there right each individual who came here carry lots of expectations from his family and from the community also so given this background you, you know it is not easy like wherever we go now that caste is basically falling us the discrimination is falling us and we have to break the shackles right we have to break this uh, stereotype image what people have built it and i think uh, the more and more uh, dr ambedkar's followers will basically come and or are basically cross the borders i think we will win this battle otherwise it will be very hard for us uh, uh, people may ask that okay, do you hide uh, your identity i will say that no i don't hide my identity i have a watch you guys can see it i have a watch that has dr ambedkar and basically i post this watch wherever i go uh, you know so i i don't hide my identity uh, so the landmark case what uh, uh, everyone knows about right what exactly happened in cisco caste discrimination case so i i was part of cisco for five close to five years uh, in us as well as back in india so i know how cisco system works internally uh the this in in the cisco cast distribution case if you look at the the person who who named himself as a john doe right he was a principal engineer now let me tell you like uh, like in a college or in a school we call it as a principal right the principal is the top of the head of that particular unit whatever we run right so in technological industry right uh, the principal engineer is the director or the person who is the main lead or the architect for the for the whole product you know uh, into which uh, group that person is so john do our guy is a principal engineer it means that he is no less than anyone he studied in the same institute where milind and myself we studied like in iit bombay and uh, we know in iit bombay even the roll numbers states that okay which category we belong to so it's like it's not hidden right like from we whether we come from scst or whatever right everything is basically you know known to everyone because of that uh, you know a presence of a roll number structure the year and then category and then whatever the sequence number it is right so ultimately the friends and the classmates and the even professors will come to know that who who you are here in john doe's case in class uh, cisco case right the the colleagues of or, or the classmates uh, okay john doe's classmate from iit bombay unfortunately became uh, his manager in cisco of course i don't want to undermine the caliber of those oppressors also they have great caliber i will say because they started multiple companies they are like more than 50 million plus asset in their pocket and they are still heading the business unit but believe me our guy john do is no less he has also worked at the top startup companies and you know he, now you could say that cisco has hired him as a principal engineer he is no less than anyone but when you know the caliber has to be shown when the power and the authority has to be seen that is where the problem started right and now the time when we show our talent and merit and stand by our human principle taught by none other than dr ambedkar that is what is not acceptable acceptable by this privileged people right that is where the rift starts with ideology and that is where the discrimination game begins as long as uh, you know one keeps the low status always say yes sir i will do whatever you want i will get squeezed whatever way you would like to squeeze me then we may not get burned right we may not see their breath and you know we could not get hurt but the moment we stand with our principle as a human not to discriminate from anything right that is the time they will ensure that we get uh, into this problem right 
So I, I believe the philosophical talk is, uh, is, is can, can go on, but let me basically you know, uh, talk less and uh, show the action more. All right. So what we have collectively uh, you know, uh, done to protect ourselves or make sure that this, this, this kind of situation doesn't arrive uh, again, uh, the moment we have learned about this caste discrimination case uh, uh, in 2020, right? Uh, at that time, I was president of uh, uh, Ambedkar International Center, and uh, we started engaging with reporters, Reuters, Wire, whatnot, you, you just name it. We started basically, you know, uh, engaging with them with the real testimonies so that the reporters are aware and they can basically publish the stories in the, in the, in the newspaper so that the news stays alive, right, in the, in the heart of United States. And that has significantly helped us. Uh, so the day we have started, like every month, we, we used to talk to uh, at least three to four uh, reporters every weekend. Our people gave them the real testimonies that how the caste discrimination basically happening uh, in the United States. And that has basically prevailed in such a way that, you know, uh, the major newspaper has covered our stories. And because of, because of that, uh, we could basically see, like Melinda already basically mentioned that uh, many state universities here are, have started adopting, you know, the caste as a protected category. We also uh, try to basically uh, do a tech seminars so that, uh, you know, the tech industry here, uh, we basically got majorly white uh, management population here and we have trained them like we call it a like one on one course is like an introductory course of the caste discrimination or the caste based hierarchical system explanation and we we made them that okay this is how the discrimination works uh, and this is how we basically get you know a hostile environment here so people are learning uh, corporate sector is trying to basically adopt the the right strategy to cover up uh, I work for Facebook uh, infrastructure and uh, I could basically see that even in Facebook, the HR policies are going to change. Uh, we had a very big uh, webinar kind of uh, uh, event hosted by Facebook HR uh, at London uh, location, uh, which was attended by like all geographical branches of Facebook. And they were basically discussing about the caste discriminations and practices and what, as an employee, we should not be following it. I was so pleased to basically see that kind of things are happening. People are basically making conscious efforts. Uh, we have a course, I think every, every other company must be having a course where we try to basically unlearn the biases. What every person has some and other biases, right? That has to be unlearned so that we can we 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 don't become a bottleneck or we don't become a judgmental person about others' opportunities, right? So that is where uh, the corporate sectors are moving, and I'm glad to basically see people are talking about the <laughs> unlearning the caste biases also, right? So uh, going further, when we basically uh, uh, thought to take up this case in a serious way, as we basically approached a lot of reporters. What additional work, what we have done here is like, you know, uh, we understand one part, like the Supreme Court here or the, the Court of California here may not understand the caste discriminations in a, in a right way because they have not experienced it, right? Like the, uh, the way they have seen the racism. And, and that, is, that is where um, AIC has basically stepped in. And we thought that, okay, let's do uh, a filing of amicus brief, which is uh, a supportive document one can submit to the court. And it's like a friend of a court, right? Where the, the judge, judges will be able to understand the caste discriminations in, in, in a deeper, deeper sense. And that's where we basically, we came up with the 12 page report uh, prepared by our top academic. This may be link issue. Uh, I hope he will join very soon. Please wait some time. Connectivity problem.
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm back. Uh, I think I was disconnected. Uh, can you hear me guys now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you can carry on. No issue. Please. Thank you. So I was basically saying that uh, the last statement I was mentioning that uh, I feel we have a win. Cisco was about to strike out the case from the court and the amicus brief and the social pressure, what we have built up here has definitely helped not to strike it out, but delay the hearing. So they have postponed the hearing, but uh, we are we are very hopeful that the amicus brief, what we have provided is definitely going to guide uh, the judges uh, and eventually the court over here. Uh, this has, the, the, the day we basically filed it, we got a press conference here in United States. We got so many, uh, uh, so many good people uh, from different background, non-Asian community, uh, who are ready to basically take our stories, who are ready to basically understand the caste discrimination in much more deeper sense. So this is a great, 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 great scene. We have also got uh, an uh, invitation from New Jersey government part. You know, they asked us to explain the caste discrimination to their whole department. So I think uh, the awareness is spreading like a, a fire right now, and this is going to help us in long run. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to basically see like how people are still, you know, uh, trying to find out uh, our our identity. They basically ask about our eating eating habits, right? And uh, the moment they understand that okay, this eating habits is specifically for SCST or you know like untouchable people, they try they, they start you know distinguishing themselves uh, from us. Uh, they even basically go and tap our shoulders to find out if you know there is a thread uh, we are basically wearing or not. That is how people are judgmental uh, in in identifying the hidden caste system, right? Uh, they may ask you that hey, over the weekend, where in which temple you go generally, right? And what what exactly you do over the weekend? So all sort of things are basically you know uh, happening here to uh, get to know the identity if someone is trying to basically hide. And so it is not easy for anyone to hide the identity. I would basically see if more and more Ambedkarites karites are coming here in the Western uh, the area, then hopefully we will have a better fight, uh, uh, fight out uh, things here, right? So uh, trying to basically conclude our top priorities is right now like Co like coordinating with the tech sector here so that we define their policies in such a way that the caste is protected, the biases and learning uh, philosophies is introduced. And as we know that the Google, Microsoft and other uh, office uh, companies having offices back in India, if we bring it here, as we know that the central policies basically go along everywhere, uh, it will definitely help us to put the caste discrimination, uh, you know, uh, uh, biases related things even in India back, right? So, and, and strategic, strategically, of course, we are basically going to build more awareness here and work with uh, even academics uh, here. So at the end, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of ground to be covered to fight on this caste discriminations. And we as a follower of Dr. Baker will continue his mission to prevent and if possibly eradicate, eradicate the caste systems wherever it is possible. So thank you so much for providing me an opportunity and allowing me to share my thoughts here. With that, Jayvin, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A very informative lecture given by you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Shrikant, sir. Uh, thank you, Vidya, ma'am. Uh, I just uh, giving a request for all of uh, all the participants that we are uh, organizing this program since last many months. And every Sunday we organize this program very regularly uh, with a new uh, person, uh, intellectual person from uh, uh, different part of the country, even from the abroad also. Uh, uh, for circulation, this program we have used uh, platform like WhatsApp and Telegram group. So my kind request all of you that please join uh, that groups I have uh, given you in the uh, chat box uh, uh, for a future communication. And I, I prime, re my, uh, prime request that we have uh, one YouTube channel. Uh, if you miss this program on uh, Zoom platform, you can uh, uh, see that program and you can watch that video uh, itself on the YouTube channel. So the same name is there on the YouTube channel. So please uh, join with that uh, YouTube channel and please subscribe that uh, for uh, regular communication. That's my uh, request for all of you. Thank you, Vidyam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. अब मैं इस चर्चा के लिए सागर आमंत्रित करती हूँ ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर सुखदेव थोरात सर
सर यू आर म्यूटेड आवाज नहीं आ रही सर आप म्यूट हो ओके नो आई हैव मथी नथिंग मच टू से आई थिंक यू हैव लिसन टू दी वेरी सॉर्ट ऑफ इमोशनल शेयरिंग बाय मिलिन ऑफ सर मोल एंड चाहंदे व्हाट आई could imagine that it is a replica of what uh, the employees in india face at their workplace uh, in their interpersonal social relation with the high caste and uh, uh, and the and the and the general uh, interaction with the people belonging to the high caste the doctor mol has pointed out that uh, uh typical mentality of an indian you know there is no context there is nothing and yet the caste prejudice comes out so voluntarily so spontaneously about that cricket story and also how difficult it is uh, to to expose yourself open up to yourself because there is always a scare and a feeling and fear that your identity might if it is disclosed it might affect your uh, work chances you it might affect your other things uh, but also i think chandi has brought out uh, quite clearly that uh, you require a lot many thing from the from the company including the green card and the letter and other thing and i can imagine there must be a dual discrimination at that stage at at that particular stage uh but i think the both of them have also brought a hope they exactly carry what we do here in india and particularly in maharashtra and elsewhere that you open up your identity and this courage has come simply because of dr baba saheb ambedkar moment that is better to be open forthright rather than suppress the identity <coughs> but there are many of them who who live in a constant fear so i would only say that uh, i am yet to see an ideology which is so uh, uh, with such <laughs> negative feeling and uh, so harming to the particular community i have aimed it to see an ideology which has survived for 2005 year and it it is becoming more and more stronger now uh, in recent times it's very very stubborn uh, and it remains and uh, it affects particularly the uh, dalit uh, the entire motive is uh, partly it may be and as psychological but it is basically materialistic it is an economic motive that we don't give you opportunity instead we enjoy it uh, so they enjoy it at our cost if you refuse one or two dalit from getting a job in the company you can have another equal number from your own caste so it is the foundation is the material base and economic base beside of course the prejudice and other thing go, grows over a period of time but that is a superstructure down below is the is the interest of the community so i will uh, um, uh, say with that that it's a very good experience uh, information that we have got what they are doing uh, chahande has uh, has shared with us how he they brought out in the newspaper how they are getting support from the uh, the american people uh, uh, so let us have a discussion let it open to the uh, to open for the people i think uh, this has been the highest number it touch 100 people online participating mm-hmm. uh, we do not know how many of them are on youtube or telephone uh, please with that uh, okay uh, thank you sir now this platform open for the discussion you can raise your hand or uh, keep your question in chat box also many questions are here sir question as well as uh, responses yeah thanks milin sir and takshak sir for your thought
crypto hacking talk thanks everyone uh participants are uh, requested to ask question the, themselves uh, they can uh, open on their mic first and then uh, start the question uh, one my uh, kind request for all of you that please open your uh, uh, video also when you are asking any question please uh, sir, hello sir <coughs> hello hello ha sir um main navnath sir ne baat kar raha hu sir ha sir boliye please actually sir main मिलिंद सर से पूछना चाहता हूँ जो इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटी और फॉरेन यूनिवर्सिटी में जो कंपैरिजन है कास्ट आ, कास्ट लो हाँ सर कास्ट एट्रोसिटीज या कास्ट हेरेसमेंट का तो कंपेयरली जो हर हरासमेंट के लिए या कास्ट जो ट्रोमेटिक कंडीशन होती ना अट्रॉसिटीज के लिए उसके लिए एविडेंस होता है लगता है तो वहाँ अमेरिका में आपने बताया कि बहुत हा जो लॉ बहुत स्ट्रिक्ट है तो उसके लिए भी ऑल जो प्रोसीडिंग होती होगी ना जी बिल्कुल यहाँ हर चीज कायदे से होती है इंडिया में जो आई विटनेस आई विटनेस की बात होती ना सर यहाँ तो इंडिया में मैनुपुलेट भी होता है कभी कभी वो स्टूडेंट या स्कॉलर के ऊपर प्रेशर भी डाला जाता है आपको डिग्री लेना है आपको एक कास्ट की केस फाइल करना है तो वैसा इथिकल और जो बाबा साहब ने बताया था कि जो वहां भी इंडिया में कास्टिज्म है वैसा अमेरिका में भी कास्टिज्म जा रहा है आपका सवाल क्या है कि यहाँ पे किस तरह से सर जी इज आस्किंग दर देर इज डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन द यूनिवर्सिटी इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज वेदर दे आर देर आर इन द फॉरेन यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑल्सो यस सो इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटी द डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इज मोर रिमार्क बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिजर्वेशन एंड पर्टिकुलरली द डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ओवर रिजर्व कैटेगरी सो दैट हैज इट्स ओन डायनामिक्स एंड इट्स ओन इंटेंसिटी तो यूएस में जो है वो रिजर्वेशन के तौर पे नहीं होता है डिस्क्रिमिनेशन लेकिन एक जो जैसे थोरा सर ने कहा कि ये इसमें इकोनॉमिक और प्रैक्टिकल मोटिव ज्यादा होता है कि अगर यही पोजीशन में कोई दलित आ जाता है पढ़ने के लिए तो वो अगर ना आए तो उसकी जगह कोई अपर कास्ट से आ जाएगा तो आगे चल के जो रिसोर्सेस है उसको आ, उसको कंज्यूम करने के लिए थोड़ा लोगों के पास ज्यादा ज्यादा संख्या रहेगी तो यहाँ पे जो ड्राइविंग क्राइटेरिया है उसमें रिजर्वेशन नहीं आता है लेकिन लोअर कास्ट को या दलित को आगे नहीं आने देना है इस भावना से ज्यादा ज्यादा अः यहाँ पे डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होता है मतलब यह इंडियन ही लोग कास्टिज्म करते हैं या फॉरेनर भी करते हैं जैसा नहीं नहीं देखो हाँ। इसमें एक बात है कि इंडियन ही करते हैं फिलहाल क्योंकि फॉरेनर को कास्टिज्म के बारे में जानकारी नहीं है ना ही उनके आइडियोलॉजी मतलब उनके धर्म में इसे कुछ कहा गया तो उनको वो कंपल्शन नहीं है ना ही इंडियन के आने से उनपे कोई असर होता है लेकिन इंडियन के आने से इंडियन पे असर होता है कि उनके कास्ट का एक पोजीशन एक दलित ने ले लिया उनके धर्म शास्त्र के अनुसार उनको दलितों को एक विशेष स्थिति में ही देखना चाहिए तो अगर दलित आगे चल के प्रगति करता है तो वो भी उनको मंजूर नहीं है ये जो नॉन इंडियन है वो फिलहाल तो नहीं कर रहे हैं लेकिन जिस तरह से दुष्प्रचार हो रहा है जिस तरह से झूठा नेरेटिव सेट किया जा रहा है जो मैंने मेरे टॉक में बताया तो हो सकता है कि उनपे इस तरह का इम्प्रेशन किया जाए कि ये कास्ट सिस्टम कास्ट सिस्टम से भी ज्यादा ये दलित जो है वो एक्चुअली वो खुद हम पे अन्याय करते हैं इंडिया में जिसकी वजह से हमें वहां इंडिया में मौका नहीं मिलता और हम यहाँ आए अगर इस तरह का नैरेटिव रिवेल करता है या इस तरह का नैरेटिव अगर उसको काउंटर नहीं करेंगे या उसका विरोध नहीं करेंगे तो हो सकता है कि 
जो नॉन इंडियन है उनके बारे में गलत फहमिया पैदा हो जाएगी कि ये कास्टिज्म है क्या और इसके असली विक्टिम्स कौन है और बेनिफिशरीज कौन है एनके uh, सोनारे सर uh, रिक्वेस्ट है कि जेव तुम्हें प्रश्न विचारता है वीडियो ऑन ठेवा कृपया बाकी चंदा दिस थैंक यू बाकी चंदा पुन प्लीज सर बोल सर डॉक्टर बोलकर फ्रॉम नागपुर खड़कपुर and a uh, professor uh, abuse a very uh, you know unparliamentary language and we uh, we complained uh, against her in uh, with the director iit kharagpur as well as the uh, national women right commission and uh, uh, the uh, director responded that uh, it is a very unfortunate that it has never happened in the history of iit kharagpur uh, iit kharagpur and uh, we have suspended her and we are still following up uh, that issue and uh, Uh, we have asked the director that she should be dismissed from the service so that it becomes uh, you know the uh, deterrent and uh, no iit professor or any faculty uh, dares to abuse and uh, discriminate against her people so uh, i think you know uh, the american congress uh, members of the american congress and senate must be uh, educated on these issues that how discriminations are taking place and we have a lot of data on this uh, caste discrimination caste uh, atrocities so um, i must compliment uh, um, the this uh, uh, professor thorat sir and uh, the the team patrik chande bhautik ji and uh, um, the avsar mol ji the wonderful presentation they have made and we are with you in all your battle thank you very much jai hind बॉम्बे सर ये जो चीजें है जो कि अभी बाउंड्री के बाहर चली गई है है ना इसलिए यह है कि इंडियन जो लोग है जो टेक्निकल सिस्टम के लोग है ये तो माइंडसेट है ये कास्ट से ज्यादा इवन कोई मुस्लिम भी हो अगर वो इंडियन इस तरह से होता है तो वो भी जाके बाहर जाके भी इस तरह से काम करेगा वो सो इट्स नॉट ओनली द हिंदू पीपल बट ये तो वायरस है और ये सब तरफ दिमाग और इससे खा रहा है तो मुझे ये कहना है कि जैसे जैसे हमारा एसर्टिंग बढ़ता है वैसे वैसे इन लोगों को ये लगता है कि दे आर नो पेमेंट एंड दे आर चैलेंज इन सुप्रीमेसी ऑफ अवर्स ऐसा ही लगता है कि हमेशा और सालों साल हमें अपनी सुप्रीमेसी में रहना चाहिए ये ये जो माइंड है ये ये पूरे ब्रमिकल माइंड है इसमें खास से ज्यादा जो भी घोष्ट है वायरस है ये सब तरफ फैल रहा है तो हमारा भी एसर्टिंग बढ़ाना बहुत जरूरी है और जो भी हमारे पास वायरस है और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है है ना जैसे मैं बोल रहा था कि वीसा जो बैन करते हैं तो कैन यू कंपेल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दैट द कास्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन शुड बी देर तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात है कि ये इतने जल्दी होने वाला नहीं है बट जैसा तक्षक ने बोला कि इफ यू कंटिन्यूस थेरेपी दैट सी इंडियन सिस्टम इज लाइक दिस आपकी आवाज ही नहीं आ रही है जो आप बोले ना कुछ समझ में नहीं आया आप अपना माइक ठीक कर लीजिए आपकी आवाज नहीं आई ठीक से मैं नहीं समझता कि मिलिन अवसर मोलो इनको समझ में आया कि आप क्या कह रहे हो हमें भी नहीं आ रहा हाँ नहीं आवाज नहीं आ रही आप ऐसा करो आप आप ना चैट पे सवाल भेजो आपका चैट पे भेजो आप विद्या यू टेक दुसरा सर एक मिनिट सगड़ा पार्टिसिपेंट रिक्वेस्ट है कि भरपूर वेड़ है कृपया थोड़ा शॉर्ट मध्य क्वेश्चन विचारा प्रश्न सगड़ी कड़े भरपूर मोटे मोटे है तो एक्सप्लेनेशन देने पेक्षा क्वेश्चन विचार बोला स्कोप भेटेल प्लीज आवाज नहीं आ रही 
हाँ चैट बॉक्स में है सर वहां से पढ़ लेते हैं सर रेवत कुमार पूछ रहे हैं कैन वी कंपेयर यूएस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टू इंक्लूड कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन शुड नॉट डन फाइल ग्रांटिंग वीजा द शॉर्ट आंसर कुड बी लाइक यू नो वी नो वी वांट टू रीच देयर इवन सोनारे सर हैज सेड दैट एक्चुअली वी नीड टू रीच द कांग्रेस पीपल यू आर राइट वी आर इन द प्रोसेस एज वी आर बिल्डिंग द ऑफिस एंड होपफुली वन डे वी विल रीच देयर इवन टू द वीजा थैंक यू राइट i also read out one uh, resolution that was passed so it is you can say just a uh, uh, start to that journey but like takshak said yes our ultimate goal will be that uh, caste becomes a very deciding criteria when issuing visa or engaging in any capacity with indians knowing that there is a risk of caste discrimination so we are we are marching towards that It may take time but definitely efforts are on थैंक यू सर प्रोफेसर धर्मपाल सर आपका हाथ ऊपर है हाँ जी जी बोलिए जय भीम साथियों मेरी आवाज आ रही है मैडम ये आप डायरेक्ट सवाल कीजिए सर जी 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 पहले तो मैं मिलिन जी को और तक्षक जी को बधाई देता हूँ और हमें बड़ा आश्चर्य हुआ कि इस समय ऐसे समय पर भी अभी भी विदेशों में भी खासतौर पर अमरीका में भी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन हो रहा है लेकिन मैं जानना चाह रहा हूँ कि ये तो हमें मालूम है कि ये शो कांड तथा कथित जो उच्च जाति के लोग हैं हिंदू ये जहाँ भी जाएंगे ये कास्ट वायरस लेकर के जाते हैं ये हमें मालूम है अच्छी तरह से बाबा साहब के हम फॉलोवर हैं लेकिन हमें जानना चाह रहे हैं कि ए, क्या इसके खिलाफ अब तक कुछ कार्रवाई वहाँ की नहीं गई है कि इस तरह से अगर कास्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होता है वहाँ अमेरिका जैसे राज देश में तो उसके खिलाफ कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए बहुत पहले होनी चाहिए थी दूसरी बात यह है कि मैं ये जानना चाहता हूं कि जब से भारत में ये बीजेपी आरएसएस की सरकार आई है दो हजार चौदह के बाद क्या तब से ज्यादा केसेस बढ़े हैं क्या इस तरह के या उससे पहले किस कितने केसेस थे इस तरह के ये इसके बारे में थोड़ी जानकारी हमें चाहिए और इसी बात में ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि जितने भी हम लोग भारत में या पूरे विश्व में अम्बेडकराइट और बुद्धिस्ट लोग हैं हम सबको मिलकर के एक यूएसए को रिप्रेजेंट करना चाहिए कि इस तरह का डिस्क्रिमिनेशन भविष्य में कहीं ना हो और वीजा देते समय पर भी ये लिखा जाए कि वो हिंदू मैंटेटी को लेकर के नहीं जाए वो अगर कोई भी व्यक्ति अगर यहाँ का बाहर जाता है तो वो हिंदू मैंटेटी को छोड़ करके जाए वो ये बात जो स्पष्ट रूप से वीजा के अंदर भी हो जानी चाहिए तो मैं इस तरह का जवाब कहता हूँ हमारे मिलिंद जी से कि वो थोड़ा इस पर थोड़ा अपने विचार प्रकट करें कि क्या राय है उनकी आपकी धन्यवाद जी जरूर तो जैसे हमने हमारे प्रेजेंटेशन में कहा तक्षक ने भी बताया कि यहाँ पे जब भी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होता है और उसको कार्रवाई करने लायक अगर कोई ग्राउंड है तो जरूर होता है जैसे रक्षक ने बताया कि उन्होंने एमिकस ब्रीफ फाइल किया सिस्को केस के लिए लेकिन वो बात तो अभी है कि जहाँ पे केस फाइल हुआ है जो लीगलिटी में है या कैलिफोर्निया टेक्स बुक केस की एक बात है जिस जो तो शायद आप लोगों को पता होगा कि कैलिफोर्निया टेक्स बुक केस ऐसे था कि ये जो पाठ्य पुस्तक होता है टेक्स्ट बुक उसमें कास्ट को ग्लोरीफाई किया था उसका उदात्तीकरण किया था कि कास्ट एक अच्छी चीज है वगैरह वगैरह तो उसके खिलाफ भी फिर बड़ी डिबेट हुई और हम लोगों ने उसको अपोज किया और वो वहां से निकाल लिया गया तो जहां भी इस तरह की चीज होती है तो उसका प्रतिकार किया जाता है लेकिन उससे बड़ी चीज यह है कि जो सिविल सोसाइटी है यहाँ की जो एकेडमिशियंस है जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स है उनको सेंसिटाइज करना है जब केस आती है सामने तभी तुम उसको रिस्पॉन्ड करोगे वो एक बात हुई वो तो करना ही चाहिए लेकिन उसके पहले भी एक नीव रखनी चाहिए जहाँ पे ये कास्ट मिनस क्या है इसके अलग अलग डायमेंशंस क्या है उसका सोशलाइजेशन करना है तो थोड़ा सर का एक इनिशिएटिव है अनफिनिश्ड लेगेसी ऑफ डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर जिसके पांच डिफरेंट इवेंट्स हुए हैं अभी शायद कोरोना की वजह से दो तीन साल में हुआ नहीं तो ये यूनिवर्सिटीज में जाके वहाँ के एकेडमिशियंस को वहाँ के स्टूडेंट्स को स्टूडेंट्स अलग अलग देशों से आते हैं तो उनमें जाके कास्ट क्या है उसके पहलू के अलग अलग और उस अम्बेडकर फिलोसॉफी क्या है उसको फैलाने से ये चीज एक बैकग्राउंड क्रिएट हो जाता है एक न्यू तैयार हो जाती है 
तो फिर उसके बुनियाद पे आगे चल के इसको और जब इस तरह के प्रॉब्लम आते हैं सिस्को के वगैरह तो तब तक एक सेंसिटाइजेशन पार्ट हो गया था तो वो प्रक्रिया जारी है कई दशकों से और वो अभी भी चल रही है तो कोशिश बिल्कुल जारी है इस इस दिशा में दक्षक यू वॉन्ट टू एड सम No, no. I, I think this is this is great. What you just summarized. Thank you. Uh, now Ashish Bansod, sir. Uh, ji, thank you, madam. Uh, I will come straight to the question, uh, sir. Uh, Ashish, sir, on your camera, please. Ashish, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have seen that here in India, I have seen that I am from Madhya Pradesh. Uh, कि हमारे जो भी पहचान के ब्राह्मण्स हैं जो ऊपर कास्ट हैं उनके बच्चे बहुत ज्यादा संख्या में विदेश में जा रहे हैं तो मुझे ऐसा कैसा है कि इंडिया में ऐसा कोई ड्राइव चल रहा है थ्रू देर रेफरल कॉन्टेक्ट और अदर थिंग्स अपने बच्चों को ज्यादा से ज्यादा वहां पे सेटल करने का ये मेरा एक क्वेश्चन है और भी बहुत से क्वेश्चन है सर क्योंकि ऐसा मुझे महसूस हुआ कि उनके बहुत ज्यादा बच्चे वहां जा रहे हैं विदेश में दे मे बी गेटिंग सम काइंड ऑफ हेल्प और समिंग मे बी गोइंग ऑन यू वॉन्ट टू गो फर्स्ट Yeah so, yeah, yeah. so the main point is that everyone knows, right? US is an economic leader in the world, right? and it has a lot of infrastructure to raise yourself. And that is where these guys are trying to basically motivate their own kith and kin and sending their sending them here. So it is all about you know catching up the opportunities, and that is what they are doing. And uh, what i feel right now here is that there are so many organizations from our community and we are also trying to do the same thing i hope you might have been uh, seeing uh, the train from our community too yeah if i may just add one thing uh, like takshak said it's just a part of upward mobility and the brahmins are in a empowered position to avail that opportunity because they have been uh they have the resources and they appropriated those resources over the centuries over the millennia so they are in a better position it's everybody's uh, uh, aspiration to uh, come abroad particularly to the us but the brahmins are able to realize it because of their resourcefulness towards it the resources are not necessarily acquired through any uh, moral means but it, it is uh, available to them थैंक यू सर थैंक यू टू हेव दैट कि इंडिया में भी ऐसे कैंपेन चल रहे हैं फॉर द अपने जो लोग हैं अनप्रिविलेज्ड को वहां तक ले जाने के लिए मेरा एक क्वेश्चन मैं थोड़ा सा कमेंट करना चाहता हूं हेलो सर एक क्वेश्चन लेते हैं सोनारे से बात हां ये बंसोड बंसोड जी का जो इशू ये बताया है ना उसमें बहुत मेरा कमेंट है एक एक मिनट है आधा मिनट दीजिए मुझे ओके हेलो हाँ सर बोलिए हाँ ये जो बंदोट जी आपने बोला है ना कि आपको ये पता चल रहा है कि बाकी कम्युनिटी के लोग जा रहे हैं तो महाराष्ट्र में इंडियन महाराष्ट्र में जो है इंडियन ओवरसी स्कॉलरशिप चल रही है ठीक है इंडिया में चल रही है और महाराष्ट्र में महाराष्ट्र ओवरसी स्कॉलरशिप चौमरा स्कॉलरशिप चल रही है अभी कर्नाटक में चल रही है आंध्रा में तेलंगाना में और इसमें भी अपने केरला में भी ओवरसी स्कॉलरशिप चल रही है और वो हंड्रेड पैसा मिलता है तो अभी Uh, आपके मध्य प्रदेश में जो लोग है हमारी मूवमेंट है वो लोगों ने डिमांड क्यों नहीं किया अभी तक एमपी गवर्नमेंट ओवरसी स्कॉलरशिप शुरू करे अभी ये छत्तीसगढ़ में उन्होंने डिमांड किया है और बनाई जो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर नेशनल एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंजीनियर छत्तीसगढ़ उन्होंने अभी चिट्ठी लिखी है उनके मुख्यमंत्री को तो त्रिपुरा में अभी अभी शुरू हुआ है राजस्थान में भी एग्री किया है तो हमारे लोगों ने जाना चाहिए ना भाई बाहर दूसरे स्टेट में क्या चल रहा है उसका एग्जाम्पल लेके अपने स्टेट में आंदोलन करना चाहिए ऑटोमेटिकली हो जाएगा कोई ऑटोमेटिक नहीं होने वाला है आप डिमांड कीजिए कि मध्य महाराष्ट्र में सौ स्कॉलरशिप दे रही है तो मध्य प्रदेश दो सौ क्यों नहीं दे रही है तो और आपके लिए उसको डॉक्यूमेंटेशन चाहिए सब हम आपको प्रोवाइड करेंगे मैंने हमने हमारा कॉन्टेक्ट नंबर एड्रेस सब शेयर किया है सोनारे सर इन दिस रिगार्ड कैन यू प्लीज ज्वाइन व्हाट्सअप एंड टेलीग्राम ग्रुप सो दैट प्लीज Thank you so much. Thank you. Facebook group and Telegram. Oh. I already yeah. joined. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Know that. Please share. Please ah. share the documents so and that. For your information, yeah. I have been ah. in state. Me in state. Me overseas policy. Start. 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 Start.
तो ये मध्य प्रदेश में सौ देने में कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगा लेकिन हमारे लोग जवान तो खोलना चाहिए ना ऑटोमेटिक एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि ऊपर से कोई ये हो जाएगा मैंने देखा से इसके पीछे ड्राइविंग फोर्स एक्चुअली नहीं रहता है सर वो मुद्दा पहुंच चुका है थोड़ा सा बाकी लोगों को एक चीज मैंने देखी सर जैसे इंडिया में होता है सवाल ले लो आप कोई किसी को क्वेश्चन है तो जी सर शिव कुरेल सर आपका हाथ ऊपर है यस मोरे सर यस सर 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 ऑन योर कैमरा फर्स्ट बहुत सारे इश्यूज तो हम लोग फेस कर रहे हैं और हम लोग सब बहुत कुछ जानते हैं की इनका नेचर चेंज होने वाला नहीं जहाँ पर भी जाएंगे वहाँ प्रॉब्लम ही क्रिएट करेंगे जाकर चाहे वो इंडिया हो चाहे फॉरेन हो जहां पर भी जाएंगे हिंदूज एंड सो कॉल अपर कास्ट फ्रॉम इंडियंस वेयर सो विल सो एवर दे विल गो दे विल क्रिएट प्रॉब्लम फॉर अस ओनली तो जब उनका इतना ज्यादा इस तरीके का माइंडसेट है जाकर हम लोग पूरी तरह से समझ चुके हैं एंड वी आर क्वाइट अवेयर ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट एनी वेयर दे गो दे विल हैव परमानेंट एनमिटी विद अस तो उसका सलूशन सर किस तरीके से हो सकता है जैसे कि हम लोग सबसे ज्यादा जो सफर करते हैं वो रीजन ये है कि हम हमारा सबसे बड़ा बैकबोन जो फाइनेंशियल बैकबोन है वो कहीं पर ये नहीं है मजबूत नहीं है तो इस डायरेक्शन में हम कैसे अपने आप को इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं मेरा क्वेश्चन सिंपल सा है कि फाइनेंशियल एम्पावरमेंट या स्ट्रेंगनिंग की डायरेक्शन में हम इंटरनली क्या कर सकते हैं एज कह लीजिए आर ओन कम्युनिटी पीपल Here in India or in foreign countries. Okay. हम हमने उसके okay, okay, chat box में लिखा है कि हमारे अपने जो बहुत सारे लोग हैं जाकर हम लोग unite ही नहीं हो पाते हम लोग कुछ कर ही नहीं पाते और बहुत कम ऐसा segment है जो कि कुछ करता है तो वो भी बहुत अच्छे से prosper. आप, 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 okay. आप इसका सवाल समझ में आ गया है आपका सवाल समझ में आ गया आप answer सुनो. Yeah, so I think uh, the short answer here is. सवाल बहुत सारे हैं हमको काम करना है we are basically working even at the ground level we have entrepreneurship wings at multiple places right multiple organizations are basically chiming on that people are working and even in even United States there are few among us who have started the companies and they are basically leading their efforts in that direction thank you right thank you sir uh, T S Morey sir ah uh, yes आखिरी सवाल रहेगा जस्ट विथ रिगार्ड टू दी मार्केट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन नंबर ऑफ स्टडीज हैव बीन डन इन इंडिया बाय इकोनॉमिस्ट एंड सोशियोलॉजिस्ट दैट देयर इज अ मार्केट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन टू अ लार्ज एक्सेंट इन इंडिया टू व्हाट एक्सटेंड देयर इज मार्केट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इन अमेरिका um okay can you please repeat market dis discrimination the number of studies have been done in india with regard to the market discrimination market discrimination in india is to a large extent what is the case about what is the to what extent there is market discrimination in america <laughs> is market discrimination referring to businesses open by dalits not getting under the guise of merit veterans? in india under the guise of merit they are denying the market for cc cc market as in uh, let's say in the free market uh, employment or state uh, state that you don't know from health and uh, you see education state is dictated of state now, now the market is dominant you see Listen, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the question is the uh, Milind Osmani is asking you really, but I will 
Mm -hmm. uh, say that he was asking whether the Dalit businesses face discrimination. Obviously, I think when uh, Melinda or Salmol and others talk about it, it's a discrimination in hiring, in employment by the companies where the Indians are employed. Uh, so there is a discrimination in employment and hiring. There could be a discrimination in wages also. We do not know as such. But even if you take uh, white and black, there is a huge discrimination of black by the whites in the market. Hiring, employment, business, there is a massive literature that has been brought out by uh, black academicians. So there is a discrimination, both, I think, the Indians. That is the topic is, which we are discussing here, how the lead face discrimination in employment, uh, in, in possibly in business, and as well as interpersonal relationship. Uh, and, and, and in uh, American society is not free from discrimination of black by the whites, uh, of the Latinos by the whites, uh, and even Asian for that matter. Yes. Uh, with that, madam, over to you. Okay, sir. Uh, abhi to koi sawal nahi hai. Samap karte, sir? That was last. Who? Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Okay. Okay. Thank you, all of you. Up uh, is a webinar. Ke akri pada ta kam a chuke hai. My professor, Dr. Gautam Kamle sir se anurod karti hu ki up is webinar ka vote of thanks. Okay. Very our sunpare. हाँ ठीक है आ, मुझे ऐसा लगता है ये सब डिस्कशन देख के कि कोरोना वायरस से भी कास्ट वायरस बहुत डेंजरस है और अमेरिका इतनी आबादी को यहाँ के मतलब विश्व की आबादी में जो अमेरिका की आबादी है जनसंख्या है उतने लोग पीड़ित है यहाँ इंडिया में और इंडिया के बाहर के लोग भी पीड़ित है ये सुनकर बड़ा ताजुब होता है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये इसके लिए भी उसका जो वैक्सीन है वो वैक्सीन भी बड़ा परिणामकारक होना चाहिए इफेक्टिव होना चाहिए मैं आपका अधिक समय नहीं लूंगा ये वेबिनार को सक्सेस करने के लिए डॉक्टर मिलिंद अवसर मोल सर यूएस से हमारे लिए उपस्थित रहे और बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन किया उन्होंने इसके लिए मैं उनका तहे दिल से शुक्रगुजार हूं डॉक्टर तक्षक चौहान दे सर उनका भी शुक्रगुजार हूं उन्होंने भी बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन दिया है और हमें अच्छा एजुकेट किया है प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर सुखदेव थोरा सर इस वेबिनार की अध्यक्षता के लिए उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं डॉक्टर विमल थोरा मैम हमेशा हमारे साथ रहती है हमें प्रोत्साहित करती है उनका भी शुक्रगुजार हूं डॉक्टर त्रिलोक हजारे सर उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं एक बेहतरीन संचालन के लिए प्रोफेसर विद्या चौरपुर मैम उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं टेक्निकल सपोर्ट के लिए डॉक्टर श्रीकांत बहुते और रितायुष सर इन्होंने वो काफी अच्छा हमें सपोर्ट करते हैं उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं और इस वेबिनार के लिए आज का जो रिकॉर्ड है हमारा वो रिकॉर्ड टूटा है हंड्रेड के ऊपर लोग यहाँ मौजूद थे तो उन सभी का मैं शुक्रिया अदा करूंगा सर यूट्यूब चैनल पर सर यूट्यूब चैनल पर 220 के ऊपर लोग आज ऑनलाइन थे आई वॉज ओके वेरी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड कंग्रेचुलेशन आपको आपके टेक्निकल सपोर्ट की वजह से ये हो पाया तो मैं उन सभी का शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ खास करके अभय आकाश माहौरे प्रोफेसर अलका पाटिल मैम अमोक कीर्ति सर एंड्रॉइड ब्लू ड्रॉइड इनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ अनिल कुमार अनीता मैम आशीष दुपारे सीबी प्रसाद साहब दीपक खांडेकर साहब देवराव कामले जी दीक्षा चौर पगार मैम डॉक्टर कोलेकर विनोद विनोद कोलेकर डॉक्टर नवनाथ सोनोने सर डॉक्टर सुनीता मैम डॉक्टर डीजे डांगे सर एफ के भीमटे फुला खांडेकर मैम गजानन दमके जी जागेश सोमकर साहब जय सिंह साहब जीवक कश्यप साहब खुशाल साहब किशोर खांडेकर साहब 
एमडी एमडी चौरे साहब मंगेश आचार्य मनोहर थोरा साहब मिलीन लोन पांडे सर आशीष बंसोड़ साहब नागरपा होलकर साहब इनका शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ डॉक्टर नीलाधर हड़के सर इनका शुक्रिया अदा करूंगा डॉक्टर एन के सोनारे प्रोफेसर पारिश भगत सर प्रशांत डालिमकर साहब प्रदीप नगरारे जी इनका शुक्रिया अदा करूंगा प्रशांत मोटगरे साहब इनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ प्रोफेसर प्रोफेसर धर्मपाल पहल डॉक्टर रमेश दानगे सर कोलहापुर से रेवत कुमार बोरकर साहब सीमा खरात मैम शुभांगी दामले साहब शुभांगी दामले मैम शुद्धोधन देशव्रतार स्नेहश्री टी एस मोरे साहब तनुजा लामसोंगे उषा मोरे विनायक कामले वैशाली सरदार विश्लेष नगरारे एल वी चाटनकर और विनायक कामले इन सभी का शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ और एक पार्टिसिपेंट का फिर से सभी पार्टिसिपेंट का शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ गेस्ट का भी शुक्रिया अदा करूंगा और आ, मुझे लगता है कि ये एक अच्छा हमारा प्रोजेक्ट है वो अच्छी तरह से चल रहा है इसीलिए सबका शुक्रिया अदा करके मैं यही रुकता हूँ जय भीम थैंक यू सर जय भीम आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर हाँ ठीक है और वेबिनार खत्म हुआ ऐसा घोषित करता हूँ ठीक है थैंक यू सर